The Tech Nerdist channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to check us out on Patreon, pop over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-V-O-R-O-U-S. Here, we do our best to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in 3D printing and tech and keep you informed on the latest developments in these sectors. So, if you're interested in getting updates on 3D printing or technology such as programming, robotics, artificial intelligence, and things of that nature, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like on this video, and comment about what you'd like to see in the future because we make these videos for you. Welcome back to the next episode in our Ender 3 Dual Extrusion build video. I have some interesting news. Uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. For now, uh, I did get this mounted and it is pretty solid. As I said, this is not our permanent extruder. It's pretty much just a placeholder. But we do have a few issues here. One of the things we run into is a problem with reversing that wheel on the X carriage. So as you can see, my carriage slides. Uh, when I get to about here, it stops, which is not ideal. We're not reaching this end stop here. The reason for that is because the bolt is sticking out back here and it's hitting the frame, this piece right here, up in the corner. Now, this is a very structural piece. I could take a notch out of it and replace it, but seeing as how our end stop is an ultimate, ul excuse me, uh, isn't in the best place at the moment, I think our best bet is to make another iteration of this case. Uh, it will have a flange right here with the screw holes and the end stop will then come out about three millimeters and eight millimeters to the right. This should allow us to hit our end stop without having to adjust this bracket. And remember, it seems like we're losing a little bit of build space from this, but to be honest, it doesn't matter because we can only print as far to the left as the right nozzle will go and as far to the right as the left nozzle will go, which puts our print area between here and here. So we can mark that and see how much we're losing. Basically, we're reducing this build plate from a 235, 235 to be just about a 200 millimeter build plate on the X. You don't lose any distance on the Y, and obviously I have this enormous height mod on here. So I think we can make up for it with orientation depending on what we need to print in a larger size and I'm not foreseeing any issues with that. For now, let's jump over to Fusion 360 and take a look at the model that we've designed and we can get it onto the printer so we can replace this one and move on to the next step. Now here we have the model and I am actually currently exporting it to STL. We'll get that out of the way. But you can see the basic gist of things. So I've taken these notches right here, or these screw holes and knocked them off. And then I drug them over here to the side. So this panel right here should cover that gap we're talking about. And the end stop itself will stick out past the end just a little bit, far enough for the carriage to activate it and keep us from continuously trying to slide to the left and skipping the belt when the head won't move any further. This guy is almost done exporting. We're gonna throw it into Kira and slice it up and throw it on the printer. I will get you some footage of it printing and then we will wrap this video up with the install. All right, here we are in Kira. Our file is finally done exporting to STL. So let's go ahead and grab it, drag and drop, throw it in here and see what we got. So here it is, pretty simple looking. Um, I'm pretty sure the best orientation that I can come up with for this is probably going to be to place it directly on this surface here. Although, yeah, and I say that because I have one overhang, two overhangs that are at right angles on this face, but if I flip it over, the only overhang at a right angle will be this one. Well, that's not true. We will still have this little part right here but it's still less than the whole surface area of both of these. So let's get our rotate on. There we have it. I am using tree support. I should have everything set here. We're gonna need to adjust the temperature because I'm printing in PETG, so 230. And 
build plate to 60. Everything else should be pretty well the same. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the infill on this guy to about 20% because it is pretty solid. It doesn't really need to be that solid. I want my wall thickness to be 3. And... other way there then it'll automatically calculate for us and then I want to check my speed it's not bad for PETG turn the fan off um, build plate adhesion there's none I'm printing on a glass surface so I should be good support uh oh we don't actually need that we're doing tree support so turn on tree support slice and I will see you guys on the printer. So I promised you some footage of the piece printing and here we are. This is that same yellow PETG we've been using. Everything seems to be coming along nicely. It is going to be about another three hours before this print is finished up and then we will swap out the parts with the one that is on there currently. So stay tuned and we will show you the next step. All right, so we have replaced our component here that's holding the end stop and the end stop is now located in the position where it will actually be activated. So as you can see, things are working quite nicely and this mount will probably be our final iteration. It should work pretty well. I think I'm going to reduce the distance of the screw holes here, and that should eliminate this slight angle I'm getting. But uh, right now, everything's lined up. The end stop is clicking and not sticking, and this seems to be working great. Stay tuned, guys. I got plenty more to come on this build. I actually uh, am looking at a couple of other options for dual extruding as well, such as the Chimera hot end. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, um, probably won't be going on the Ender 3. I think that one runs a Volcano, so we'll probably turn the TiVo Tarantula Pro into a dual extruder too. But for now, progress on this Ender 3 is going amazingly well. Um, not too many components left to build. We still need to add the fans for the part cooling to the hot end. And then it is basically just waiting for that board to get here so we can hook everything back up and test it out. So really looking forward to that. If you guys are excited about it, as excited as I am, leave a comment down below and let me know. And leave a like on this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Plenty more of these coming at you. And every time I make an iteration or change to this build, we will put a new video up. Eventually, all the parts will be available on not only Thingiverse, but uh, My Mini Factory as well. So you will be able to just download the parts, print them, and then go, which means that you should be able to just print the two parts and replace the board, and you will have a dual extruder yourself. So that is pretty interesting, and that is the goal, to make it pretty easy to upgrade and save a lot of other people the guesswork of having to design these parts and, and work through the iterations and see what works and what doesn't. So very, very excited and stay tuned, folks. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit... 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link, check out our Patreon link, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.